Oh, hello, and welcome once again. J76NY here, back with the Union in our Union Max Difficulty campaign on Grand Tactician the Civil War. Uh, as promised, we are going to throw together an army out of my home state of New York. We are going to hopefully beef it up pretty good. I know we got a ton of recruits in New York, so um, we've got a lot to pull from here. So let's create ourselves a new army. Out of New York, we've got almost 20,000 recruits in New York itself, so um, we're not letting Erasmus Keys run the army. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to build my army of New York, and I will let you know what the end results are. Uh, also, what I expect of this episode right now going forward, or at least the campaign going forward, uh, we have our forces that are moving into Virginia over here. Uh, we won a pretty good battle here against the Army of the Potomac. Uh, we had an unfair advantage, but I'm not complaining about that. Uh, Irving McDowell and his army are still uh, in a state of readiness that allows them to uh, move with Robert Patterson over here in support. Uh, we do have the Army of the Shenandoah with 8,000. Um, might want to consider bumping up the numbers in uh, Irving McDowell's army here. So I'm going to build the Army of New York. I'm going to give uh, General McDowell some more forces. Uh, the Department of Ohio under McClellan here has uh, 24,000 right now, or almost 24,000. They're headed south, uh, sitting on the border here. We have the Army of Kentucky, uh, 25,000. Um, so what I'm going to do is, in addition to McDowell, McClellan's going to get some more men. Uh, we are probably going to have to make another new army out here uh, just to contend with everything that's happening. Um, I'm thinking right now... Uh, or was it... Oh, where was it? You know, we've got cavalry reform, and that's probably an important thing to have just because uh, the size of our cavalry is right now limited to 500. I don't know if any of this increases. Yep, there we go. Brigade's up to 2,500, so that's something we uh, may want to consider. Uh, also, weaponry. <laughs> because the uh, mixed muskets or the uh, mixed cavalry weapons are just not working. Um, so my plan as far as our uh, policies go is I'm going to um, get the policy in place that allows us to have core uh, and then work on our cavalry either through size or weapons. So let's get the Army of New York built. Let's get McClellan and Patterson uh, reinforced and get into today's action. All right, here's what we've done with the Grand Army of New York under Major General John F. Reynolds. Uh, we have four divisions of infantry, one of cavalry, and one of artillery. I've uh, increased the number of divisions, I mean brigades, to four in each division. Um, first division is under Strong Vincent. He didn't show up last time I looked, but he's here now, so he's going to come with me to New York. Joshua Chamberlain, everyone's favorite. Oliver Howard. Philip Sheridan. We've got Philip Kearney in charge of the cavalry. I tried to uh, put a 
guy by the name of Gibbs in there because he was actually a cavalry officer. Um, and somehow when I promoted him, I, I went way too far. I promoted him up to, uh, I think, Major General or Lieutenant General. And uh, wouldn't let me put him in uh, charge of a division, so... And then uh, Rasmus Keys gets his uh, artillery battalion over here. Uh, he is an artillery officer, so uh, he can have this artillery ba battalion in the new Army of New York with 33,100 men. Uh, moving on to the Department of the West, uh, I did add a um, few more brigades into the mix here for uh, General Harney. Um, even though he is defamed, uh, hopefully he can make up for it uh, as we go through the campaign. McClellan also got a bump in his number of brigades that he has. Um, Department of Pennsylvania, same with that. Uh, Irvin McDowell, same deal. Uh, he actually has... Five brigades each, so but he's okay. He he won a battle, so he earned it. Uh, Army of New England. I uh, didn't really do anything with the Army of New England just yet. Um, I could probably add another brigade to each of these guys. Uh, so I think I will do that while you're watching, so you can see what I have left for uh, recruits. It seems like every time I open this window, I have more. So um, I just kept adding to uh adding to what i already had here uh we'll go with uh cavalry first we'll add some cavalry from massachusetts i did mess around with the uniforms a little bit i forgot to show you that um so you guys can be brown brown or maybe blue but look man yeah, there you go All right, so there's another cavalry brigade from Massachusetts. We'll do artillery from Massachusetts as well. Infantry. And we can pull from Michigan. Not. It'll be 1,500, but that's all right. Uh... And Wisconsin, way out there in Wisconsin. It'll take them a little bit to get there, but eventually they will. And uh, I'm sure they will fight just as proudly for Massachusetts as they do for Wisconsin. Now if you try an upgrade right here, you see I have nothing. Um, weapons. You can't order anything. So... <laughs> Uh, we have the weapons that we have. Okay. All right, so that is what I have built in terms of my standing army. Uh, right now we have a field and manpower of 85,000. I'm going to take a look at this right here. 85,000 to their 77,000. Um, they've made a little bit of headway in their navy but not by much um speaking of our navy what are these guys doing here the atlantic blockading squadron they're still waiting for some ships not a lot of time has passed uh since i put that fleet together um so they're still waiting for their ships uh But that's about what we're looking at here. Um, just going to start the clock and see uh, where the episode takes us. If anything, I would expect uh, some form of action in Virginia down here, particularly around the Winchester area as uh, Irvin McDowell or uh, Robert Patterson moves in. Uh, neither one of these armies that they have in Virginia are overly big, 8,000 here and then uh, the remnants of the Army of uh, the Potomac with 4,000, so 
if they even take battle, I'd be kind of surprised. Um, once our army of New England gets down there, they are on their way down by rail. Uh, it says marching, but I moved them by rail. Um, these guys are going to as well join them down here. Uh, I might move them into kind of the Ohio uh, area, the eastern Ohio area. What I want to do in terms of uh, my coverage is I want to have, like I said in the last episode, I want to have enough uh, individual armies that they can act independently and uh, move south, but also have enough that they're close enough that they can support each other if uh, battle comes. I don't know if that's even going to be possible, um, but... That's the plan, anyway. We got to do something about this little pocket right here. Uh, don't really want them up into Ohio like this and uh, near Pittsburgh. So, going forward, uh, we will see what the Confederates do and react accordingly. But they did take Cincinnati. Oh, McClellan sat up here. Now they're moving up into Ohio, past McClellan. Isn't that nice? Go get them, McClellan. They're charging. They charge right past him. Oh, they're, they're on the march. They don't give a shit. 26,000. McClellan's got 22,000. Go get them, McClellan. Come on, boy. All right, so here is the deal so far. Uh, we have taken Alexandria... And Winchester. We've got ourselves a new supply depot. <clears throat> Flowing, on the other hand, these guys are all the way up on Lake Erie, moving in on New York State. Man, he really dropped the ball with that one. Army of Kentucky. All the way up in Cleveland. Come on, McClellan, you clown. But they, they he's chivin chasing them the whole time. Unreal. The Army of Northeastern Virginia with 12,000 versus the Army of Shenandoah with 5,701. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to take this battle. Just because I'm annoyed about McClellan, I want to kill some rebs. Really do. Culpeper Courthouse, Virginia, June 9th, 1861. All right, Culpeper Courthouse, also known as Chancellorsville. Very wooded area, so... All that artillery we brought along might not do us very much good. Uh, they're down here. They're down along the uh, Welford Furnace Road. We're up here. And we've got to cross a river. So I am going to grab their army. And I'm just going to move them forward as much as I can. That. Everyone's going to get in marching column. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the cav out first. We're going to try and come down through uh, Chancellorsville. This area here. I would expect if they're going to be dug in, it'd be along this uh, stream here. Uh, they don't have that many men. They've got 6,000, so we outnumber them better than 2 to 1. So, problem is getting down there, getting into position, um, and actually finding a good way to attack. Now, obviously, cavalry is going to be out in the front scouting, so uh, we're going to move. We're going to get down towards Chancellorsville along uh, the Orange Plank Road and then uh, make our next move from there. It's coming up on the end of day here on the first day. We did find them. Uh, we've got our artillery right here in the center, uh, right above uh, this uh, clearing here. The rest of our units are out here. Um, I'm not going to redeploy them at all, because there they are right there. 
I'm trying to see. It doesn't look like... Uh, <laughs> I was kind of hoping that our artillery would be able to get some type of uh, sight on them, but not sure what's up with this here, unless it's just uh, telling me that they have entrenchments. Looks like they've got one brigade of, uh, or two brigades of infantry, and uh, one of cavalry here. So as day two starts, uh, we're going to get our forces moved in. I'm going to move our artillery. Out into this clearing here. I didn't want to do that. Because now they're going to redeploy. Well, fuck, might as well do it all now. Somehow doubt our artillery is going to be able to do much of anything. We can try get them right on the road and get up, get up a little closer. Now they're going to redeploy. I'm not going to have any idea where they are. Oops. Not sure why they're still. I have to do this for all of them. All right. General, get up with your men, please. Thank you. Uh, I'm just going to do it at the divisional level. They should all be in single line, but they're not. Some of our uh, brigades here are just kind of small. I guess from the last, uh, last battle, I didn't look to consolidate my forces at all. Minor oversight on my part. Burnside. You up in reserve. Harvey Brown and our Cav. Oh, God. Great. They have any line of sight whatsoever? Not really. I have to push them right out into this clear. Oh, hold up. No. There's a little bit. If I moved them up a little bit, maybe they'd uh, have better line of sight. Have. Yeah, we'll come up right here. And we're just going to advance on them. Get our uh, people moving, so... At least that's the plan. I don't know where these uh where they're gonna end up though. That's the problem. Once I hit that play button, they're probably gonna vanish. I'm gonna have to chase them across the map again. Uh but we will find out here. So well they didn't. Alright. That's a good thing. Okay, let's start moving these guys in. Our larger brigades out front. Definitely be you.
Burnside's going to act as a reserve. Get up on this. I could probably send my Kevin. Uh, in support of our artillery. Oops. What did they do? Let me select this artillery unit. No. Really isn't a good map for artillery. On. Go. Then we'll get this. Get our left moving up as well. have a little closer than that there. All right, looks like they're starting to respond to what we're doing. Shifting this brigade over here. Alright, forces on the march. Up a little bit. Now they're gonna have to come down through this uh through this gully here to make their attack. We got Stuart's cavalry with three hundred uh horsemen on their flank. Oh, fuck. Uh, and then Loring's Brigade, 2,800. Their guns are starting to open up. And it they're, looks like they're doing uh, some counter-battery fire here. Our guns are opening up as well. have you second division set to long range up a little bit here We've got decent uh, line of sight from over here. Right, let's have them dismount. And 
come in. Slow this down a little bit so I don't get it carried away here. Hopefully we get some form of cover from being down a little lower. Okay, let's start pushing in on them on their left. top of each other here fix that when they get closer in position Bring our dismounted cab up with the rest of the line. Whoops, have <laughs> got about Burnside over here. Up over this way, Burnside. Can't always forget about my reserves, I guess. They're idle, they're just the long range. to move up just a little bit and get in range. Moving up two. I think their calves pulling back. Alright, hit them. These guys are in range. Still advancing. And so far so good, I guess. Close in combat with Stuart's cavalry. Bring you in on them too, Brown. All right, we're gonna have you hit this artillery here. Me. Get your men up there, please. What's our cab doing back here? Not moving up like I wanted him to. Alright, rally your men before you break. Colonel Hunter, rally your men. Give a general rally order here. 
Cavalry's lost half their strength. We're not even close. Alright, that artillery's broken. Both their artillery is broken. I want you to come down and hit this cav. starting to open up on them from our right. You guys are stuck in the trees, apparently. All right, keep pushing in on the cav. can wipe out Stuart's cavalry, that's that's a good thing. Right, they broke. You come down, hit the cav as well. Right, you come in on withers there. All right, the enemy's retreating, so that's a good thing. Have everyone focus fire on Withers. How many casualties has he taken? 150. He's still a pretty sizable brigade. Let's move you up here. Abercrombie, how you doing? Still stuck in the trees? All right. You can attack. All right. You got an hour to do as many, uh, as much damage as we can. Oh shit. Keep forgetting to on click off the uh, unit. They're holding steady. They're holding steady despite the fact that we, I uh, guess we can capture some of these guns while we're at it. Cavs on its way out. Let's just focus on Withers over here. Any more guns we can capture? There we go. Why don't you guys fire on them? Actually, I don't think they have any anything going for them. Alright, they're starting to pull back now. Seventeen percent. We've only lost six hundred and seventeen men. Pretty good. All right, we're driving them off. Here we go. Old Pepper Courthouse. Bought around Catherine's Furnace. Confederate dead litter the field. All right, good job, guys. Proud of you. Uh, we took all five of their guns. Uh, wiped out about 66% of their cavalry and... 900 of their infantry. We didn't lose any guns. We only lost five of our cavalry and 661 uh, infantry. So good job. Medal of Culpeper Courthouse. Federal minor victory. All right. Colonel Hooker, the artillery commander. 
Colonel Joseph Hooker becomes a national hero. His artillery did pretty good for being on that battlefield, to be honest with you. They opened up nicely. Uh, enemy reported suffered total casualties of 1,153 with 176 killed. Uh, 666 men with 107 killed. Uh, we've captured 684 rifles and three guns with 174 enemy soldiers having been captured and taken to our POW camps. All right, so that is the Battle of Culpeper Courthouse. Things are going pretty good down in Virginia, I'd say. This is the problem. McClellan, what are you doing, buddy? He's capturing Cleveland, Ohio. That's almost in New York State, man. This is a Union Telegraph station in... Uh, Oh, where the hell is it? That's Pennsylvania. Here's Ohio. Doesn't tell me where uh, where exactly it is in Pennsylvania. Erie's up here somewhere. Probably around in here. No even show Erie? Really? <laughs> Sorry, Erie. Maybe that's Erie. Dunkirk? Been to Dunkirk before. There's a... Nestle Purina factory I pick up at in Dunkirk. There's Erie. I drive a truck and go to Dunkirk and pick up cat food. Army of New York, you're going to have to come do something about uh, McClellan's incompetence. I'm thinking, they really didn't have to make it that historical. I mean, you saw it. They just ran right past him. He was heading towards him. They just, eh, we'll take this other road, leave you in the dust. You can chase us, chump. So that's going to be something we're going to have to deal with. We're going to have to get them off of Lake Erie. The Confederates off of Lake Erie. Think about that for a second. He's got to get his readiness up. In a hurry. Uh, oh, look. Got the New Orleans squadron all the way up here. I think it might be time to put together a... Uh, Another naval unit to come down and deal with these river boats here. I could do that real quick. Uh, let's. Fleets. Make a new fleet out of. Cairo. We'll build. It's the. Uh, the Ohio Squadron. Put all of our river boats in there. All four of them. That'll give us, uh, how many guns here? Two, seven, twelve, fourteen. All right. To build some river boats. Gunboat. Five guns. Sea and river. There we go. Build uh, five of those guys. There we go. We've only used about half of our shipyard capacity, so we could build ships galore. Uh, how long is it going to be before these guys get ready here? 94 days. All right. Well, get to work building them and deal with whatever happens to come up. Uh, Virginia's going good. The West, uh, not so much. Gives us something to look forward to in future episodes. Anyway, if you liked the episode, hit the like button. If you have any tips or advice, leave those in the comment section down below. If you want to follow along through our Union Max difficulty campaign, uh, hit the subscribe and come along with us. And we will see you for our next episode, uh, where Irving McDowell will no doubt continue his rampage into Virginia. Okay, 76NY saying thank you very much for watching, and have yourself a very good day.